Phone batteries can be so annoying. A lot of phones' batteries rarely last the full day, which means a required charge around 3 or 4 is intrusive. For people whose jobs depend on being connected, having a half hour, hour at some point during the day where they're frankly not attending to their job isn't good. So why can't you just fill up a battery like a tank, up the pressure and force the electricity in? Is it dangerous or is it flat out impossible? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time, we ask the question, why can't we charge our phones instead? Instantly. Now, it's a bit of a disappointment to have to wait for the phone to charge, especially if you're in the middle of something and ran out of battery. Like I said, some people have jobs where they need to be connected constantly. So what's the reason that a battery can't do what people want it to do, which is just instantly charge? Contemplating the idea, it's important to keep in mind laws of physics. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, for instance. Something that might come to mind immediately is the idea of perhaps, you know those Samsung phones that were blowing up in people's pockets like on a plane? Is that the result of trying to make batteries charge faster? Well, actually no, and I think it's important to address that it's simply them trying to make a smaller battery. Samsung making all of their components too close to each other, resulting in heating that they were unable to compensate for, is basically why that happened. However, that's not to say the result of a fast charge wouldn't be similar. That just isn't why the Samsung ones did that. But to explain it properly, to actually go through the facts of the situation means we're going to have to address some other things before that. Let's lay some basic ideas first. What is a battery? Is it an electricity tank? Is it like a gas tank? Like something that you fill up with something? No, otherwise when you had an empty battery, your phone would probably weigh significantly less than when you had a full battery. No, there's always material inside the battery, and although it functions a lot like a tank of gasoline in a car, at least to the lay, internally it's absolutely nothing like that. A rechargeable battery is simply a type of material that can have two types of chemical reactions, a charge and a discharge. A battery is filled with electrolytes, which work as kind of a wire, so to speak, that facilitate a reaction between a cathode and an anode. Cathodes and anodes are both electrodes. When charging, a chemical reaction takes place where the cathodes become negatively charged and the anodes become positively charged. And though a little bit more is going on than that, that's the basic building block for what goes on. And that's pretty much how you have to look at it. A charge or a discharge is simply a chemical reaction. The cathode and the anode are chemicals, and they're always in the battery, always ready to do what they do. Now the battery in cell phones and most electronics is a lithium ion battery. Lithium ion batteries use circuitry in order to attempt to avoid something called thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is essentially a cycle. It's usually the result of an exothermic reaction, which means a reaction that releases heat into the system outside of the contained system, which then, because it's inside a bunch of machinery that acts as insulation, doesn't actually go anywhere immediately and creates a feedback loop in which the first reaction, which releases heat, causes another reaction or simply perpetuates itself because of the heat. The reaction feeds itself with more heat and it eventually just gets so hot it ignites. You know this as the Samsung effect. Now, like I said with Samsung phones, the reason this happened is because they didn't use wide enough circuitry. The heat wasn't dispersed properly enough and it generated these reactions. But like I said earlier, a fast charge would also cause this kind of reaction regardless of the type of circuitry. The reason for that is an electron moving on a conductor, regardless of what kind of conductor, is always going to meet resistance. And when a conductor causes resistance, regardless Regardless of which direction the electron that is traveling through on a current, whether it's a charge or a discharge, generates heat. If you were to send a lot of electrons at once through a material that carries a resistance, well, it's going to heat up. And while it happened to the Samsung batteries because they created circuits that were too small to effectively disperse the heat, imagine just putting so many electrons through that it really doesn't matter how efficient your circuitry is, it can't disperse the heat. You'd basically have the same problem that all those Samsung batteries had. Except the Samsung batteries were doing it with a regular charging process, and we're talking about pushing a lot more energy through. So in theory, could a fast charge be done? See, that is 
possible, however, it would result, well, in batteries that are no longer batteries, but rather bombs. And the reason for this is we don't have any conductors that have no resistance in them. That's essentially the big problem. And that's not just a problem for this, that's a big problem for a lot of industries. Renewable energy, for instance, is not quite viable as a countrywide source of energy at the moment, specifically because of conductors. Since there's electrical resistance, current infrastructure can't carry the energy far enough and, well, you can put coal into a truck and carry it. That is to say, our infrastructure is the reason we don't have super duper futuristic energy yet. So there's a lot of incentive to improve upon this technology. Essentially, getting towards a renewable energy would, well, drastically reduce your energy bill for one, but having better conductors, for instance, if they're ever able to perfect metallic hydrogen, which is essentially the closest thing to a superconductor they have found that works at room temperature, if they're ever able to stabilize that and use it as a conductor in not only our infrastructure, but also in batteries, in theory, we could have much, much faster charges. Obviously, they're looking to create breakthroughs in those areas to solve much larger problems, such as the energy distribution of our national infrastructure, but essentially that's exactly what the quote-unquote fast charge in a cell phone is waiting on as well. Certainly you can create larger circuits that disperse heat better that allow you to do fast charge. I mean, how does a Tesla Motors vehicle charge as fast as a cell phone while needing significantly more energy that it disperses to a larger battery? Well, it's just that it disperses the heat better. But we can't very well carry around something the size of the Tesla battery and the supportive circuitry in our pockets, can we? I'm doubtful. Yeah, you could probably carry something around in a backpack, but right now a phone is a certain size, and although sometimes it's bigger, sometimes it's smaller, it's generally pocket-sized. So the solution is not making things smaller. Clearly, the solution is simply a better conductor. And well, yes, there are better conductors out there that cost more, and I would expect that probably as those technologies are refined and cheapened, then you will see faster charges. It really depends on the choice of the manufacturer, what type of materials to put into their phone. But there is a limit, obviously, as of now, because we do not have any superconductors. That's just not something that exists right now, at least in mainstream society. You can have one in sub-zero temperatures and all that, but scalable mainstream technology, it's a no. So while it's not physically impossible, it's not something you would want because most people don't like having an explosion in their pocket. Or really anywhere in their normal everyday life. Yeah, we like explosions, but we like them on screens, not actually in the living room. Did this give you a better idea of why we don't have super fast charging? Leave a comment, and if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now would be a good time to do so, we upload videos all the time, and a subscription is the best way to see them. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on Waste Time.